In order to have truly free markets, we must give people the ability to buy and sell, to be a bull and a bear. That's the only way. I mean, we can't have the government nanny state us on our personal finances because ultimately it doesn't do any good. Yeah, the markets may be stable for more years than they would be. However, that stability comes at a very big cost. My friends, if you lose 50% of your portfolio's valuation, like we have seen many times in 2008, if you lose 50%, you have to keep in mind that in order to break even, you have to gain back 100%. A lot of people get confused uh, because it's kind of like a trick question, a trick math question um, on, on, on paper. It, you know, you, you think, well, if I lost 50%, then all I need is to gain 50% and then, then I'm back in the game. No, 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 no. If you lose $100 and you initially had $200, if you lose $100, you're at $100. So to get back to $200, you have to gain another $100. You have to gain another 100% to break even, to get at 0% profitability, okay? That's the, that's the big fear when it comes to the major collapse, the big one. That's why I said earlier in some of the, some of the ranting videos that, that it's better to lose 5%, 10% for a year or two. It's better to do that than to lose 50% one day because you weren't expecting it. And because the retail trade is so much, the, the retail accounts are, are, are exclusively buy side only, only the, the very few, the aristocracy can get their money out the first. That means that by the time you decide to sell out on your retirement uh, portfolio, you're gonna get, you're gonna sell out at the worst possible price. In fact, that will be the price that you should probably, at that point, you should probably just hold on and, and hope for a recovery rather than to uh, sell out at the worst possible price. So the, the nanny state that is controlling the markets is really actually what they're doing is they're controlling and forcing you to be on one side of the trade exclusively that is going to always cause problems. When it comes to a financial market, whatever the market may be, you must bring together buyers and sellers. You can't have a, a market of only buyers or only sellers. Eventually it won't work. And that's the problem. We're having way too many buyers now. Even though you know it doesn't look like it in, in the index, believe me, we have way too many buyers. When you consider the overwhelming presence and the overwhelming dollar amounts of those retail accounts, we have way too many buyers, not enough sellers. There will be a panic. Th this kind of imbalance cannot last. That's why it's better to have more, you know, little bits of volatility every single day than it is to have stability over uh, several years when we really shouldn't have stability based on the fundamentals. And then one day out of the blue, let's say in September, or October, boom, it all goes downhill from there. I, I'm sorry. I would rather take the choppiness, just, to, you know, accrue some choppiness every single day, you know, rather than to have these fake markets push higher and higher only to set up the big one, only to set up the big crash. That is why I am bearish, even though, yes, the markets are still stable and still high and all that stuff. Believe me, these are dynamic circumstances. They, they don't just stay that way. I'm telling you, I really don't like how badly we are skewed on one side of the trade, that we are corralled and forced into one side of the trade because it creates unnatural imbalances eventually someone is going to pick up the tab that's going to be you and i